guys, I'm Sherry coming at you today in Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Happy to have you here with me talking a little bit of RSL today. I actually traveled for work this weekend. A couple really long flights. I was able to bust out a couple audiobooks. And man, I'm going to recommend something that, you know, probably all of you guys are familiar with. And it's The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. I listened to that or re-read, re-listened, whatever you want to call it. And boy, it, it's just so harrowing and, and relatable for, for, a, for something that was written written excuse me 90 years ago uh for it to have that sort of an impact i'll tell you what if you're going through anything in life right now and if you need a reminder on everything that you do have in life and what to be grateful for uh highly recommend that read uh just just really really just have a, has a lasting impact on me uh emotionally psychologically and uh to know what happened after that that journal that diary uh, of anne frank too was uh it's just Again, it just sits with you. It sits with you in a very heavy way, but also gives you a good thing to kind of reflect on on your own life, right? And what means the most to you. And again, the relatability of something that was written 90 years ago, uh, you know, by a, a 14, 15 year old girl and how that can relate to me today now is just, it, it's wild, but such an admiration for, for her. And just a reminder for you guys, to, again, to uh, to pick that up, especially if you haven't read it before or listened to it on audiobook. Today, again, this is the fifth time I think that we've done this. Random Shards build a random team in Raid Shadow Legends. So uh, you guys love this series. I love it too. I'll have all the other videos in case you missed some of the champions that we've been able to max out. Some really gnarly champions that otherwise we would never talk about here on the channel. That's the beauty of this series. So we're we're gonna pull we're gonna pick five champions how i'm gonna do it in today's video is one sacred shard we're gonna go with whatever champion that is we're gonna go 10 ancient shards i'm gonna pick my favorite out of those and then the other three spots are all gonna be void champions so we're gonna open up 30 void shards as well and we'll pick one champion out of the 10 to go with to build the best team that we can build so let's start out with the ancient shards here guys and see what we're gonna be working with a little under the weather too today so bear with me if this is really how you feel it and healthy i'm not crazy malin I've just been in a very bad mood for 40 years. Ba 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 stagnite. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna go with stagnite. I mean, there is no. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. Uh, I, I guess Odishai, uh, Odashi, <laughs> however you want to say his name. He's a pretty interesting champion as well. Let's just see who else we pull, but it's hard not to go with Stagnite given those options. Let's save this sacred for last. We do have a 10 times on Krisk, so. Who knows, guys? Who knows? We could get lucky there. We could get lucky. So 30 voids, we're going to pick one champion from each group of 10, okay? So Abalaster, Confessor, Malbranch, Inceptor, Huntress. This is not exciting at all. Vanguard, Huntress again, Maneater, Coldheart, and Panthera. All right, I think it's going to be Coldheart. Isn't that crazy? Over Maneater? I think I'm going to go Coldheart there, but we will see. Coldheart, Stagnite, Madam Ceres. We have a Harvester, a Justicar, a Skirmisher, a Bulwark, a Painkeeper. We have Skirmisher again. We have Centurion and Seer. So we have Madam Ceres and Seer. I think I might just go Seer because we have Stagnite, you know? Man, we have an OP team here, guys. We have an OP team. We have Coldheart, Seer, or I could go Maneater to kind of to activate another Coldheart. Wait, wait, wait. So we have... Uh, uh, it's gonna be cold heart. That's what I like. Teamwork. I'm the definition of. Get out of here, Harrier. Reliquary Tender as well. Man, now this is uh, dude, we have an embarrassment of riches here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, cold heart, seer, man eater. That's a pretty, but we also have Reliquary Tender or Gear Grinder. Gear Grinder's great. He's got a revival, he's got a heal as well. Uh, but I think Reliquary Tender might be the way to go here. She's got the cleanse, she's got the continuous heal. I think I might go, I don't know, we'll, we'll think about it. Well, I'll, I'll let you know what I choose in just a moment here. All right, here we're going to go with here. It's going to be an epic, and it's going to be Lorn the Cutter. Okay, so he has a triple hitter on his A1. He heals the champion at 15% of the damage inflicted. On his A2, an AoE leech and heal reduction, and then on a three-turn cooldown, and then on the passive, or excuse me, on the A3, uh, that unlocks that three-star ascension. Attacks one enemy, 100% chance of decreasing target's turn by 100% on a four-turn cooldown. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like a mini Heartseeker minus all the damage, right? Uh, but a good control ability, and I like that he has the AoE Leech as well. So we have Lorne the Cutter. We have Stagnite. We have Coldheart, Reliquary Tender, and Maneater? 
dude, that's a pretty OP team. Let me go ahead and build that team and I'll come back to you guys uh, with my artifact choices. So guys, I'm building Lorne the Cutter and I kind of wanted to build him or just walk you through my thought process on one of these champions. Uh, if you're not interested, feel free to fast forward. Uh, but I have received feedback in the past that like we love seeing the build, but kind of bring me into your mindset, Ash, when you're building these champions. So I want to do it at least for Lorne here. So look at his base stats. 15k in the HP, 837 on the defense, very squishy champion, a decent amount of attack, and I looked at his multipliers on hellhades.com, they're actually pretty good as well. I want him going fast, and I need him with enough accuracy, because I really want this leech, especially to keep everybody else on the team healed, along with Relic Tender's heals. Uh, so, I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of damage, I'm not going to build him all out nuker with crit damage on the gauntlets, I'm probably going to build him with crit rate on the gauntlets, and go with triple perception, that way I don't have to go accuracy on the banner so I can build some uh, sustainability, some durability on this champion instead. So HP on the banner, defense on the ring. I'm looking for attack percentage as a substat so I can still bolster up his attack which skills nicely uh, with 1443 base stat. However, the flat stats as the main stat on the ring and on the banner are really going to help me out because it's not going to scale that nice. 837 base defense and 15360 base HP. So now that I have that done in terms of the accessories, I want to go ahead and go over to the fitting room tab. I want to go substats. I want to go ahead and look for I might still be able to get crit rate on or crit damage on the gauntlets, right? But I do want to have triple uh, perception that way I have enough accuracy because I only have 125 right now. I'm not going to go savage or lethal gear on this champion. So I'm going to go crit rate and I'm going to go speed as substats because I'm going to be getting 120 accuracy just from the sets. I don't need to stress accuracy as a substat even though I don't even have it on the banner. So let's go ahead and go down to perception. And oops, main a primary stats, Ash. Come on, bro. Substats. There we go. So we're gonna go substats, crit rate, and speed. Uh, I'm not even gonna click uh, equipped because I do want to use this all with gear that I actually have right now, not on other champions. So let's see what we have here. So let me push myself over so you guys can see as well. We get some speed, crit rate, accuracy. I'm gonna try that on right out the gate here, right? And then we're just gonna move right over to the helmets. Accuracy, crit rate, speed. I really want speed as almost my per, uh, my first priority here. So I'm gonna go for a double roll speed and I'm gonna upgrade these and see what we get here. So I'm gonna take them to level eight. We're gonna get some HP. Yeah, that's no good, that's no good. All right, let's keep it going here. We're gonna go with this one, two defense, flat stat. No, speed, crit rate in defense, possible. Crit rate, speed, a little bit of an attack there. Not bad, crit rate, speed, accuracy. A little bit better, a little bit better. Uh, and that's it for helmets. That's all we got, guys. So I think I'm going to go with the... Yeah, I want, I want at least one speed. So I'm going to go with this one right here, right? We might be going with the crit rate. So we're going to try this one on. Uh, so right now, we're looking pretty good. In terms of accuracy, we'll be A-OK. -okay. My attack is going to be is going to be fine. Because we're going to have attack percentage on the chest, I think. Uh, my speed, I definitely want that to be bolstered up a little bit here. So let's see what we can find here. Crit rate speed. Meh. That's a potential one. That's a potential shield. Two speeds in a crit rate and HP. I'm just going to try that one on right away. Because I want more speed on this champion. I think that's going to be good. All right. Let's see what we have for gauntlets here. I'm going to uh, un unselect crit rate for the gauntlets. Because we might go... Eh, you know what? We have, some, we have a couple different directions to go here. Let's just see what we have available. HP percentage to build some survivability onto this champion. Uh, we have right now only 49% on the crit rate. So I still think I'm going to be looking for crit damage here. But let's just see. Crit damage with no crit rate substat. Meh. HP. Nah. We get attack percentage with a trip roll crit rate. Now, I normally never, ever, ever go attack percentage on gauntlets. But... We could scale up that attack uh, even more on this champion, and that would give us the flexibility to go for HP percentage or defense percentage on the chest, even though it doesn't scale that well. We'd probably want to go HP. Uh, at least he would have more survivability. We'd be sacrificing quite a bit on crit damage, but his attack would be nice and healthy too. Uh, here we have crit damage with a trip speed. Gosh, let's try this on. But now we're in a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue, a little bit of a pickle here. Oops. Wait, wait. Do you ever do that, guys? You ever click on it and then it goes off? I do that more often than I care to admit. All right, let's try this on. Let's equip all this junk right now. And let's see what we're working with here. So let me push myself over again. 
So now we have 37K, really low. <laughs> 2k very low 187 we're looking good since we don't have the speed boots on yet 49 167 234 really not happy with this so far but we can upgrade all of these are level 12 which i'm going to take them all the way to 16 on every single one we only have 9 million gold back in my day 9 million gold was pretty good but now with instant artifact upgrade dude you, you spend this gold or silver excuse me immediately immediately right i mean you you, you, you up you instant upgrade a couple artifacts and you're like dude i'm broke i'm broke again let's go to 16 on the helmet and then let's go to 16 oh we got another speed roll there it's a really nice perception helmet albeit a five star definitely gonna be keeping that boy let's see what we get here on this one <clears throat> we get an hp roll hey we'll take it uh okay so now let's take a quick look after we take everything to 16. Now we're at 40k HP, 2100 on the defense, 189, 49, 18. Okay, so a lot better and we haven't glyphed out the top row here. So let's go ahead and see what we have. I'm worried about our crit rate right now. So I think I'm going to have to do something that we don't like to do here on the channel at all. And I think I'm going to have to look for some, some crit rate gear, right? Because I've got myself in a little bit of a pickle here. I got greedy on all that speed on the gauntlets. So now I'm going to have to see what I have in good old crit rate because it's going to be very difficult to get enough crit rate uh, from two artifacts to get up to 100% on this champion. So what am I doing here, Ash? Where are you? Crit rate. Okay. So let's see what we have to work with. We have an attack percentage with a trip crit rate. What? Yeah, Ash, you've been sitting on a really nice chest piece here. Let's try this one on. That brings us all the way to 75% crit rate. I think we're going to need it. I think we're going to need it here. All right. Substats crit rate. Let's go to the boots. And main stat is going to be speed no matter what. So let's see what we have here. We have a lot of attack considering, uh, you know, we don't have the attack. We didn't go attack percentage on the gauntlets, which I think would have been a, a, a poor choice. Let's see what we have. Oh, ooh. Well, I think Bivold of the Thorn, I think you're going to be out of luck, my friend. We get some accuracy there too. Let's go ahead and equip that. Okay. So now we have a build here, guys. What is sticking out to you as inadequacies? First of all, 100 and 200, really happy with that, right? So the damage is fine. I'm very happy with over 4,000 there. 40K for my nuker, my damage dealer on the team, is going to be okay. My defense is, is pretty low. I'd like that at 2,500 even for my nuker. And my accuracy, I'd really like that at, at 300 for what we're going to be uh, focusing on today's video. So let's see what I can do with glyphs here. Let's get a little bit of extra speed. I didn't even see, I didn't even, I forgot to look to see what my speed was. We get a four roll there. That's really good. I don't mind upgrading, even though I'm probably not going to be using Lauren the Cutter that often on my account. Uh, this gear I probably will be using, and some of it's really, really good here. I got lucky on these rolls. Uh, so on the tack, flat stat, I have so many attack lifts. I don't know about you guys, but I have an embarrassment of riches there. So we're going to go ahead and use it. Of course, I got the one roll uh, there. That really sucks, but we do need some accuracy here, and we get six. So I will definitely take this. All right, let's see what we have next here. We're going to go to the shield. I'm going to go ahead and uh, glyph this out as well. Let's get better than a one, please. Sir, yes, sir. Ah, come on, man. Gosh, raid. The one. The one on the speed, dude. Speed glyphs are so hard to find. I'm racking up the ones. All right, guys. This is going to be the uh, the finale here of the, uh, of the Lorne build, at least. And I can't really glyph anything. Oh, no, no, no. Stand corrected. Should I do it? I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it here, guys. It's the five-star glyph, and I get a four. I'll definitely take that. I'm going to use my last HP glyph there as well. We're going to go ahead and use some defense percentage. And, of course, let's just go all out with a six-star attack here. Get some clan versus clan tournament points. 500. Thank you very much. Now, we have his skills already done. They're all, he's, I booked them all out. But we have to do his mastery. So keep that in mind. And final, final version here, very close to 41K, 2100, 100, 200, 254, nice and fast, and 262, uh, 262. We're gonna have to go support tree, obviously, and get more accuracy there, but that's gonna put us around 300. Uh, so we're gonna be good to go. Let me do his masteries, do the other champions. I'll come back to you guys with a full team. Guys, just sticking with Lauren for a moment here, we went with these masteries. Uh, I just wanted to kind of point out here, super obvious, but for some new players out there, we already had 100% crit rate, so there's no reason to go with the crit rate offense 
Experience Masteries. Sometimes when I look at other accounts or people like asking for tips, they have crit rate when they don't need crit rate. So just go with the attack. It's it's not much. It's only 75 on Blade uh, Disciple, but still, I think that it's a uh, it's obviously a better choice to go with more crit rate over the 100%, which you don't need. On the support side, we obviously went with Lord of Steel to get more accuracy off of those set bonuses, a little bit more speed as well. And then we went down to Master Hexer as well. We went with uh, War Master as our tier six mastery of choice on this champion, bringing him all the way to a total of 4,100. And again, that HP on the banner really, really helps there. 284, but it's actually going to be higher on the accuracy because of the other masteries that we picked up along the way. And then 108, 210 with the Lore of Steel bonus. So nice damage from this champion and 255 on the speed. Let me go ahead and build the rest of the champs. Be right back. So guys, here I am on Reliquary Tender. I just want to kind of touch base with you guys before I start building her out. Uh, what I want to do is I want to build her with obviously a lot of survivability, a lot of speed for those cleanses, more of those uh, heals as well. And as my reviver, I want her with a little bit of resist as well. And uh, again, so as fast as possible, as much resist as we can get on her to make sure that she's not CC'd and she can cleanse everybody else on the team. So let me go ahead and build her and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So this is the build that I came up with for Reliquary Tender. Uh, we have almost 50k HP, 3300 on the defense. Not too bad considering we have almost 400 on the resist as well. So a nice kind of tanky but fast build for a healer slash reviver on the team. We did make a sacrifice on accuracy. 137. She does have the weak version of decrease attack on the A1. So we might be sacrificing that unfortunately, but the rest of her kit does not require accuracy. So I thought I would just go all out on the, you know, survivability and the speed and hope we can keep everybody alive enough so that that A1 does not matter so much against bosses. Uh, but I want to redo her masteries. I don't want any offense out of my Relic Retender here. So I'm actually going to go defense tree. I'm going to go with the resist here instead of the defense. We're going to pick up improved parry, decrease the damage received by a critical hit. We're probably just going to go with rejuvenation as well. Increase the amount of healing and sh value of shield buffs. This champion receives by 5% to help keep her alive. Resurgent, one of my favorite uh, masteries to have as well. I guess we can go right down to wisdom of battle. And I do want to go solidarity. Increase ally resistance for 5 for each buff placed on them by this champion. She is bringing the continuous heal on a 3 turn cooldown. Uh, and then we'll just go with cycle of revenge to try to keep her alive here. Uh, I don't think I need any of these masteries, but we'll come back and revisit that as well. I do want to go steadfast to get the more HP on this champion. And I want to come down through, uh, let's go with the heal here. And then let's come down through rapid response, go down to cycle of magic, pick up lore. We have, re well, do have a speed set on her, so let's just pick up Lore of Steel there anyway over uh, Merciful Aid, and then come back down to Spirit Haste, come to Lasting Gifts to extend the duration of those continuous heals, and Timely Intervention as our Tier 6 Mastery. Increases Champion's Term here by 20% whenever an ally hero drops below 25% HP. That is great for Revivers and Healers. It's definitely an underrated Mastery that we're going to go with for this Relic Tender build. So now she's really super tanky, and I'm just very, very happy with how these stats lie here. I think she'll be fine. I shouldn't I should say really, really super tanky, but I think she's going to be tanky enough here. Uh, but time will tell, especially in a Relentless set, though. I'm happy with this build. Let's move on to the next champion. All right, guys, here are the Cold Heart build. I have her in the Pyro class skin. Uh, very, very cool skin on this Coltar. I don't have the Necrobia, but that's really, really cool. Did I miss that one? When was that available? Let me show you mine. We have the Pyroclast uh, Cold Heart here. If anybody's going to be dying on the team, it's going to be Cold Heart, guys, unfortunately, because I have her really, really squishy. Now, the bummer on Cold Heart is 13, uh, 13,710 HP is very, very low, and so is 738 on the defense. Extremely, extremely low, so very squishy champion, although one of the best, if not the best rares out there in the game, along with Relic Tender. So we have a really solid team. But if anybody's going to be dying, uh, again, queue up Relic Tender. She's going to be reviving them and it's probably going to be cold heart right so uh the problem is is i'd love to put her an hp percentage or defense percentage on the chest because that heart seeker it doesn't really scale much based on attack we're really looking for a lot of crit damage which is why we went with flawless execution as a tier six mastery in today's video uh but 
man, I mean, the HP percentage or the defense percentage on a Cold Heart's chest is barely going to give her anything because these are so low. Remember, percentage base is based off the, you know, the main basic stat here. So if they're really low like this, you're not getting much bang for your buck there. So we did go attack percentage on the chest. And instead, we went defense flat stat with a lot of HP substats on the ring. So this is really, this ring accounts for most of her survivability. We went with crit damage on the amulet. We went with accuracy accuracy on the banner we have a crit rate in a reflex set again we're going to be shutting off that a2 attack percentage on the chest crit damage on the gauntlets and as i showed you guys she's not super fast 193 uh 71 on the crit rate the reason we have that is because this a3 has an additional 30 percent chance of inflicting a critical hit okay here are the masteries again guys i went down picked up flawless execution as i mentioned before we'll see how this cold heart build works but again shutting off that that A2 and getting more A3s with the reflex procs is going to be what we're leaning on here on this particular build. Be right back with Stagnite. All right, guys. So for Stagnite, we decided to go a little unorthodox on this build. I like to have, especially in a random team like this, I like to have one champion in a shield set just to make sure that, you know, if we're cycling, if we're not able, excuse me, to cycle A1s on any given wave of any given dungeon or Doom Tower or whatever, we have somebody to kind of buy us a little bit of time until we get to our best skills. We're talking about like the second and third wave of these dungeons that's why i always like to play it safe and go with one shield set champion because shield set is based on the wearer's hp i decided to put it on stagnite so stagnite is going to have a lot of utility on this team not only is it going to be bringing the decreased attack and decreased defense which is why we're you know we're able to go with no accuracy on relic tender because we have the decreased attack anyway on stagnite he's going to be bringing the increased accuracy every time we get a debuff resisted which is really nice and the decreased speed on the a1 but what's better is he has almost twenty one thousand base Base HP, the opposite problem that we talked about on Cold Heart. So, because it's based on the wearer's HP on a shield set, we're going to build him with a ton of HP. He has an HP percentage on the chest, an HP percentage on the gauntlets. We have speed on the boots. We got a quad accuracy roll. Unfortunately, it's a five star, not six star boots, but man quad accuracy. I don't have that many of those on the entire account. We're obviously going with a lot of accuracy on this champion here. Uh, not the most insane gear in the world, but again, looking for some accuracy and some HP where we could find it. Uh, in terms of the accessories here, we do have more, I believe, accuracy, yes, on the banner. We have defense on the uh, on the amulet, and then we have a uh, HP ring. Now, I think I would probably swap out this defense amulet for an HP amulet because of the shield set, but A, I'm getting very low on silver, and B, a little bit of defense never hurt anybody, and C, we have a double roll of accuracy, which we really need on this champion, so we're not going to change anything there. 73k is going to be great for a shield there. We have 2800 on the defense. We're sacrificing crit rate and crit damage. Stack Knight actually does a sneaky amount of damage, but again, it's about surviving. It's about clearing these dungeon stages, clearing these boss stages, not necessarily how fast can we do it because speed at the end of the day it doesn't really matter in this game you know no one's going to give you an award for how fast you did things it's did you actually do things right can we be efficient with your energy anyway for uh for masteries pretty standard mastery here on the support tree uh although i will say uh, well, shield won't be cast. Uh, I guess this is fine, right? We went with the offense. We went with support. Master Hexer Sniper is going to be mandatory on Stagnite to get that 95% chance on the decrease attack, decrease defense up to 100% chance. Then we went with War Master as well to get some extra damage out of this champion. Uh, totally cool with this build. We do have uh, one speed set, so we went lower steel, but again, uh, it's not a massive difference there. Speed is nice, though, at 220. I think that's going to be just fine. So that is our Stagnite build. One left, guys. It's going to be... No one even remembers my name. Maneater. Be right back. All right, guys. So on Maneater, we went with 350 accuracy. Obviously trying to get as much accuracy as possible because of that siphon ability. It's insane. It's A2. Basically, we're stealing up to 100% turn meter on that ability. Plus, we wanted to get him as close as possible to 100% crit rate on this champion because he has that great A1. I actually totally forgot about that. No reason at all now to have that decrease attack or any accuracy on Reliquary because we have it on Maneater. As long as the attack is critical, it places decrease attack 
attack, big version on all enemies, which is really, really solid. Almost 3k on the defense, 53k on the HP, nice survivability here, and 239 on the speed. So very fast. I put him in two speed sets and one accuracy set. In terms of masteries, we went down, grabbed War Master and the support tree, grabbed those extra accuracy masteries, Lore of Steel as well. We'll obviously apply to all three of these artifact sets. All right, guys, enough talking about these champions. You saw the build on all of them. Let's go ahead and start out in Fire Knight because that is, again, the first place that I kind of thought about. Let me just check really quickly. Clan versus clan. Good luck, the Queen's Guard, by the way. Let's see how many points I got here. Not too bad. I think I was at around 140, 130,000 before I went and invested in all these champions. So actually, I was lower than that. I was lower than that. So not too bad. But we are neck and neck here. Uh, Rise from Ashes in Queen's Guard. Good luck. Let me put this team together. Fire Knight. Be right back, guys. All right, guys. So here is the whole squad. We get Relicry Tender. We get Stagnite in the Shield set. Relicry in the Relentless. We have Lorne, who I showed you guys in the Triple Perception. We have Coltar in the Reflex. And we have Man Eater in the Lead ally hp in dungeons by 33 percent great aura there thank god because nobody else on the team has any aura at all so glad that we went with man eater there we also went and picked up phantom touch because i was sitting on a five star blessing for man eater as well so really really happy about that this is stage 25 usually we don't try stages this high on this series but let's see how we do guys i don't i kind of have a little bit of faith in the team it's not going to be a fast team but we have a Reviver, we have some survivability, we have Ancient Blood ability to keep everybody unkillable for two turns, which is nice. We go in there with a decreased attack, we go in there with a heal reduction, we go in with their decreased defense. What is my team lacking? Well, quite a bit, right? I mean, we have a Revival, that's nice. We have some healage in the Leech and obviously in the A2 of Relicry Tender, which we just saw right now. And then we have the unkillable again from Amblock Debus from uh, Man Eater. However, we do fall short when it comes to increase defense when it comes to strength and when it comes to any real kind of damage mitigation on my side of the uh you know the the uh the earth universe the battlefield there we go the battlefield but so far so good i want to say i love this leech healing everybody up we have the unkillable on coltart keeping her alive we already said here and i didn't i forgot to shut off the a2 of uh of coltart but i think we're actually going to need it here even with the reflex not the end of the world but it's not fast but it's going pretty well, I would say, so far, right? And think about it. Once we get to the Fire Knight, we have plenty of multi-hitters on our A1s, on all these champions. That's going to be really, really good and beneficial, hopefully, to get that shield down, which is going to be very challenging on stage 25. But so far, so good. I'm really impressed with this squad. We were able to build a really kind of well-balanced team here, right? We don't have increased speed either. I mean, we're lacking enough. But sometimes, especially if you're not a big spender in this game, you kind of got to make do with what you have, right? So Coltart never even died thanks to Man Eater support there. And when we get to the next uh, wave, keep in mind, we will have that shield for three turns from Stagnite, which is going to come in handy, I think, right? Especially since we just use Ancient Blood there. I'm going to keep it on auto, and I'll come back to you guys when we get to the Fire, knife, uh, fire Knight, unless we have any mishaps on the second wave. Be right back. All right, guys, so on that first wave, we spent about an hour uh, kind of pounding away at Gnarlhorn there when he was unkillable before I recognized, and I took it off auto to finish him off there because uh, Colt, uh, Coltart kept using her heart seeker ability into that so here we go guys i'm just going to a1 cycle at the end of this second wave to make sure that we are ready to go against the fire knight and i really really love this team just seeing man eater go in there with a siphon ability taking that turn meter all the way down and then going back to back because he filled his turn meter up is so cool so uh we're gonna start with uh Okay, I'm very unfamiliar with Lauren's kit here, but obviously it's going to be the A1 ability, a three-time hitter. We will definitely take that. Three knocks against the Fire Knight shield. Now let's go on. Ah, uh, it's only a one-time hitter on Relicry, but I think one hit is better than nothing at this point. Let's go in again, a one-time hitter on Man Eater. Can we get this? Oh, we did get the Phantom Touch. Do you guys see the Phantom Touch counts as a hit? That was nice. Uh, now we got a four-time hitter on the A1 of Cold Heart. So we get the shield down. Uh, there it is. Here it is right here, right? Boom. Nice. 100% turn meter reduction there from Lorne the Cutter. You love to see it. Now we're going to come back around and we're going to steal full turn meter on the Siphon. Increases turn meter. We're going to go ahead and apply the debuffs here from Stagnite. We're going to come right back in with the Heart Seeker. Not even going to mess around. Nice damage there. And then we're going to come in with Lorne with his A2 ability. Get that leech down and then start hammering away here. I think I'm just going to take it off of 
Uh, I'm going to put it back on manual here, and I think we should be good to go here. I'm not sure if the shield will go back up, if we're going to get back to the A3 or the A3 of Lorne or Coltar again in time, but I think we might, guys. We have the decreased speed from Stagnite to A1. Really nice to have as well. Man, this team's impressive, dude. It's an impressive squad. I wish I could just transfer this team to my free-to-play account, and I would be like A-OK, -okay, right? A totally cool. Uh, granted, I have good gear on these champions, right? I'm not going to sit here and pretend anything other than that. But, let's see. Heartseeker, boom! There it goes. Fire Knight is going to be down. Stage 25 with a random team. At least, you know, kind of random, right? Uh, so, guys... I guess this one, Siphon comes in, steals more turn meter, steals more turn meter. That was the A3 of Lorne. I would have probably staggered that out a little bit more, but I don't think it's going to matter here. And nobody even died at all. Got close with Coltart on that first wave, but again, the unkillable from Ancient Blood of Maneater kind of coming in there and keeping her alive. Fantastic stuff. Siphon, bye-bye turn meter. Man, this team was built for Fire Knight. Talk about a strong Fire Knight team. And hey, if you're struggling against Fire Knight, you have any of these champions... You know, take some inspiration. We have a few multis on A1s, a couple three-time hitters, a four-time hitter from Coltar, I should say. And then we have a lot of turn meter uh, steel, right? Three champions with uh, Lorne, with Man Eater, and with Coltar that have that uh, that turn meter reduction. Two million damage from Col uh, Coltar. An impressive almost two million damage from Lorne. Very nice there, plus the leech heals. And then Relicry coming in with half a million heals. Stagnite putting out some nice damage considering he's not built for damage. And then Man Eater putting in a million damage as well. What a team! And then we get a Savage Shield. Unfortunately, no crit rate. I'm basically at the point on my account where I'm only keeping Savage gear if it has crit rate as a substat. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and go into, let's try out a Doom Tower boss, guys. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I want to go against the Nether Spider. Now, this is a new Doom Tower rotation, so the highest level that I do have on hard is level 30, but it's still hard difficulty, which is more difficult than, obviously, anything uh, on normal uh, track. So we're going to go with the same team here, obviously. Unfortunately, no aura that actually works in Doom Tower, which is annoying. Uh, but I think we won't have any issues with the wave here. It's really going to come down to the Nether Spider. But again, we have plenty of turn meter control. So let's see what we can do here, guys. I'll be right back when we get to the Mother Spider. All right, guys, here we go against the Nether Spider. There's going to be a very challenging battle, but hopefully it'll be a lot of fun for you guys as well. So we take a ton of poisons. We're just going to go ahead and cleanse that all off with Relicry Tender. And then we're going to go right in to the... We do need to keep... Keep heal reduction on the spider as much as possible, but I want to first go for the turn meter. And golly, I guess I'm just going to use Ancient Blood right away. We'll come back in with Siphon. And let's go in with the A2. We're going to kill the spiderlings on this round. We have block debuffs on anyway, so we're not going to be super concerned with the damage that we hear, that we get here, excuse me. Because again, as I mentioned, we're going to come in with the, uh, oh, we get the extra turn proc. How about another one? Oh, that was really unnecessary. Extra turn can be a blessing and a curse, right? Because it is, it's all, uh, simultaneously giving her that extra turn and reducing the cooldown, but it's also getting the uh, unkillable off of her, right? Uh, and she has enough resistance, but not enough to obviously prevent this, uh, these poisons. So let's go with heal reduction right now. And we kill most of the or two of the four spiderlings, so that wasn't that bad. We are taking some pretty heavy damage there. Let's go with the turn meter. And we didn't land the decrease, the heal reduction. Ah, uh, let's cleanse here. Oh man, we need to get heal reduction on this mother spider. So let's go A1 cold heart. And we don't land it. What a bummer. That sucks. He has a heal on his own A1, so that's nice there. Let's come back here. Place decrease attack on everybody. Let's come back in A1 again. Uh, we get another turn, so we're one turn away from the cleanse there. But we haven't done any damage, uh, which really sucks. Let's kill those spiderlings. Eh, at least one spiderling. Heavy poison damage. We lose Cold Heart. And we lose Lorne. Let's pick up Lorne first. All we need to do is kind of stabilize here, right? stabilize things need to set the, uh, set the table the proverbial table here it doesn't look good admittedly but it's not over yet we're going to cleanse everybody up heal everybody up we're going to steal turn meter here on the a2 we need to get this we need to go in get this heal reduction finally heal reduction applied to the spider extra turn I'll be fine. 
This rev revival is taking forever to come back up. We do need Cold Heart eventually here. Let's go ahead and apply the block debuffs and the unkillable again from Ancient Blood. Taking some damage from the spider. We are going to, I think I'm just going to A1 here. <coughs> it's nice that we have decreased speed and heal reduction. Uh, let's go ahead and cleanse, heal everybody up. We're one turn away from the revival. Let's go ahead and place the debuffs on the spider. Decrease attack, decrease defense. And now we're in a better position here. So I'm going to go with the A3, reduce the turn meter. We're going to go ahead and pick up Cold Heart here, which is nice because I think we're only one turn away from the cleanse and the, uh, let's deal turn meter again. Okay, 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 okay. So heal reduction, let's let's get that heal reduction refreshed. Two turns, okay. Now I'm not sure if I went with Master Hexer on Lorne. I think I did. But uh, I guess we can just go A2 here. Get that poison. I, th I hope we're one turn away from that cleanse here. I'm a little bit worried right now. Spider's gonna go. Okay. We have no turn meter. Oh no. Oh no. Big hit. Spiderling summoned. Another big hit. Another big hit. We lose Cold Heart again. We do have that cleanse and the heal coming up. And we're one turn away from Ancient Blood. Oh man, this is an intense... I told you guys this is going to be an intense one. We have to go A1 here. Re refresh the uh, reduced speed. Get some more damage. A little bit more heal there. And we're going to go right for the... We don't want the spider to take a turn. So we're going to have to siphon. Steal that turn meter. Right? Steal that turn meter. Come in with the A1 here. Stagnite. And again, I'm gonna we have one turn heal reduction still on the spider. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce there again. We're one turn away. Can we get an extra turn here? No, we can't. Let's go ahead and go ancient blood, get those unkillables up, and then go with the A1 here on the spider. Some more damage. We'll take it. Oh man, I need that heal reduction up, so I'm gonna do the AoE attack. It does nice damage, man. We can come in back in with Stagnite, try to sneak in another attack as we're dealing with all the counterattacks. Obviously, heal reduction is replaced there. We're going to cleanse everybody, heal everybody up, and go back in with the A1. I'm almost thinking this team might be better off right now as constituted without Cold Heart, guys. I'm only trying to take a nap. Only because we're going to be triggering all those counterattacks with her A2, her A1 and her A2 ability, right? But her A3 is so powerful too, so... And maybe it's a little bit of an exaggeration to say we'd be better off without her. I don't know. We could use a cleanse right now, though. We're taking some serious damage. Let's go with the A2 of Stagnite here, try to kill those Spiderlings, and we don't, unfortunately. So we're going to take a lot of counterattacks. And we have one turn of Unkillable left, three turns of Continuous Heals on Reliquary. It's really important that we keep her alive, but I'm not feeling good about it. We're going to call the, call to life, revive there. We're going to come in with the Siphon ability, but I don't know what, what's going to happen here on Coltar. We don't have Ancient Blood up. I think, or excuse me, Reliquary. She's going to die, and she does die. No! All right, we get a big monster hit there with uh, with Cold Heart's A3, but we're not able to take the spider down. Well, guys, you win some and you lose some, unfortunately. I wish we had won this battle, but you know what? I felt like we got kind of close. Kind of close there, right? Eh, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. Almost got the job done. I think that if I just sat here all all day and tried to RNG it, we might we may have won there. We have a lot of heal, we have a lot of turn meter support, which is really nice on this team. But I'm not sure if maybe I should have went in and tried to just kill those spiderlings out the gate there. Uh, when we lost Relic Tender, though, that's when we know we lost the fight. And we had some bad luck in the beginning, really losing, you know, Cold Heart very, very early, not able to take advantage of that big 750,000 uh, damage nuke on that A3. So anyway, guys, and we had to keep the heal reduction up, too, on the spiders. So that was all very tough to do, but I'm pretty happy with our Valiant attempt here. Let's go into the arena, guys. All right, guys, this is going to be our squad, the arena. We took Coltar out because she's so dang squishy, and I'd like, rather have a reviver with some high resist on the team. We don't have any aura, unfortunately, again here. We do have a shield of Stagnite, and I was pretty impressed with Lorne's damage overall. So let's see what we can do here with this squad going against the first team on my arena uh, in Ultimate Death Knight. But they have Kale too, and Ronda, so like the ultimate kind of free-to-play type team so we're going to come in here with the aoe leech shield reduction just do a quick damage check not too bad considering again we have not really built him uh well we built him for damage but uh let's just a1 here uh against udk and let's go ahead and block debuffs unkillable on the squad let's come in stagnite a2 ability uh put all those debuffs on the opponents and we're looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and come in here with the A3. It's going to be basically a uh, change to Ronda or change to Ultimate Death Knight anyway. So we might as well go right after him. And uh, let's kill UDK here, guys. Uh, let's cleanse and heal everybody first with Reliquary. 
Let's come in here and just chop down UDK with Maneater. Maneater actually can deal some pretty sneaky damage. Now we have to get rid of their Reviver. Unfortunately, he does go first, and it's going to be rerouted again to Ultimate Death Knight. At least one of those hits. Let's come in again. A1 here will be rerouted to UDK, and then let's go in and let's try to steal Turn Meter. Why, God, why? It will be rerouted again to UDK. <laughs> so you guys get the point here. Good news is we can pick up Lorne, who is basically acting as our nuker on this team. Uh, and let's come in with Stagnite and kill uh, UDK. There we go. And let's hopefully kill uh, their Reviver. And then now we just have to deal with Rhonda here and Kale. So should be easy enough. Not the hardest team in the world, but again, we have a pretty unorthodox team ourselves. Let's go ahead and finish off Kale. Not too bad. And now we just have to deal with Rhonda, who can hit hard, but again, we do have decreased attack on her. So I'm really not worried at this point. Let's go Siphon, steal her turn meter, or kill her, and or kill her. Not too bad. Uh, let's go against the second team here. We have Miscreated Monster. We have Sil the Drakes, Retro Drop. So they have two revivers on this team. Let's see how we fare against this squad. They have some stun, some shield, Miscreated Monster as well. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So we do go first. We're going to come in here and open up again with the Leech and the Heal Reduction, which is nice. Heal Reduction, very nice, because they do have a great healer on their team in uh, Rector Droth uh, and uh, Sil the Drakes on her passive. So let's go ahead and just kind of poke away at, uh, at him. Let's block debuffs here. Obviously, you don't have to worry about Stagnite Stun, when, or excuse me, about uh, uh, Miscreated Stun when we have the block debuffs. Ancient Blood is so powerful. It's, it's not just good. It's not only good, I should say, against uh, Clan Boss, right? Again, and with unkillable teams. It's just good straight up all the time. So we're going to steal that turn meter away, and we're going to go back to back. This is what I was saying earlier that I love about Man Eater, right? We steal that turn meter away from Miscreated Monster, then we go back to back. We should be poking away at the Revivers here on the left-hand side. We do take a couple of Provokes here from uh, Iron Brago. Let's go with the A3 and shut down Sil the Drakes. Total reduction of turn meter. You love to see it there, guys. Uh, we're not super... Well, let's just keep poking away here at the Revivers. Hopefully, we can kill them. Set up Lorne to kill them both at the same time when he has his AoE attack back. Let's see what we can do here. So far, so good in terms of positioning. Uh, let's go again at Sill here. And then let's go Rector. Okay. I don't love this position. Got the Frozen Stagnite. Let's go steal turn meter from Iron Brago here on Siphon. Just basically targeting the fullest turn meter, but nice, nice, nice. Got really lucky there. We uh, mitigated the uh, the true fear. Come in here with the debuffs. Let's go ahead and place the uh, block debuffs and the unkillable. Things are looking really, really good for our team now here, guys. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Feeling good. I love that two of our champions are void too. We don't have to worry so much about negative uh, affinities. Retro Drath is obviously going to go ahead and get her uh, revival up on Sill or vice versa once we kill her. But hopefully we can catch them before they're both. I don't know. Just it's going to be a long one going against two revivers, right? Without any block revive or anything like that. All right. So Sill is going to be. Ugh, I thought she was going to be down. All right. Let's go ahead and. Oof. Sill's going to go next, so we have to go... Let's just go A1 and save our A3. Let's save our A3 there on Lorne. So now let's poke away at Rector Draft. Let's steal Turn Meter. I love how much Turn Meter potential with Lorne's A3 and Stagnite's A2 there is on this team. It's actually really, really solid. Let's go with a Cleanse here. And we're going to be able to kill Rector Draft, I think, here, guys, before, because of all this Turn Meter support that we have, uh, control that we have on this team... Before she's able to revive the other revivers and sell the Drake and the other reviver, excuse me, and sell the Drakes. This is gonna work out really, really well. Boy, I gotta say, man, I like this team. This is probably the strongest team that I built. Uh, the fear procs there, unfortunately. Let's go in there. Good, good, good. We take her down. And now we only have two left to go. Let's go ahead and worry about uh let's worry. Well, let's worry about both of them, I guess, right? Nice heal reduction there. That's a really, I'm really impressed with Lorne the Cutter, guys. He's the champion that I was least familiar with in this video. What about you guys? I'm not sitting here saying he's like an S tier, you know, must have amazing epic champion. But boy, he does some damage. He brings a lot to the table on that A2 ability. And I love that A3 100% heal reduction, right? Uh, or excuse me, 100% turn meter reduction. 100% uh, chance of decreasing target's turn meter by 100% chance when booked. Really strong. So again, we're going to target the highest turn meter there. 
get rid of him. It's a strong, hard-hitting A2 as well. We're going to cleanse so Lauren can go again. And we're going to finish off Mr. Miscreated as well. He does kill Man Eater. We're not too concerned with that. Nice hard-hitting A2. We don't even care about revivals at this point. Let's go ahead and poke the Miscreated Monster. Get him down, guys. Hey, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really love these champions. Who is your favorite? How would you build them differently for me? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see this series more often on the channel as well. Thank you for watching. And as always...